Welcome to this new life. We're so glad you're watching this program together with us. And today I'm going to share about the salvation story of mankind. In the very first scripture of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, we read this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This is how it all began. God started to create. We don't know the exactly how long this was taking. How long was it that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth? But at a point, God started to create more and more. The fish in the ocean, the animals on the, on the land, the stars of heaven, the sun, the moon. God created this wonderful planet that we're living on right now. And then at a point, God said, let us create mankind. We read that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God created us. You are created by Him. Mankind is not a developed animal or something that has evolved over millions and millions of years. The Bible says that there's intelligence designed behind the whole thing. The earth has not just developed over a long period of time, but it was designed, it was made. And you, every man, every woman, is also specially designed by God. The Bible says we are created in His image. Now this does not make us God. This just simply means that God has created us uniquely with a spark from Him. This was why God created us, in order for him and mankind to have fellowship. Do you realize that life is not just a coincidence or life is not just a matter of, of the result of a love between a man and a woman? Life, your life, is made in heaven, created by God, that you have a purpose, there's a reason you live, you're designed by God uniquely made in heaven. Now the first two people on earth is called Adam and Eve. We read how they were living in the Garden of Eden, having wonderful fellowship with one another. Everything was peaceful and perfect. There were just harmony everywhere. We read how God came in fellowship with Adam and Eve. This was truly the intention why God had created all of it. For man to live on earth with the pleasure of life, with the pleasure of living and having responsibility and stewardship of this earth. And then have fellowship with the living God. This was how it all started. In the Garden of Eden, God planted two trees, the tree of life and then another tree called the tree of knowledge. Let's read about that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tent and keep it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. When we read here, God gave these instructions for man, how to live and what to do and what not to do. We pretty much got the totally free will to do whatever we like. But there was one tree, one tree that man could not eat of. Of all the trees, thousands and hundreds of thousands of trees and bushes producing fruits, there was one tree, just one, that man could not eat of. The tree of knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. Now, why did God put that tree? I believe it was because that he wanted us, to, as we have our free will, to live in obedience and fellowship with him. You see, if there was not a tree like that, God would not have free a volunteer worship us. We would just be like robots with no choices. But God has created us with a free will. And this tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, was not for God to keep a good away from us, but it was simple for us to have a choice where we could choose between living in fellowship, in obedience with God, or make our own will, make our own way. And God already said from the beginning, if you choose a life without fellowship with me, then it will be like death. You will die, he said. Now, when Adam and Eve did fall, they did not physically die, but something happened. You see, in the Garden of Eden, there was also a serpent. Let's continue, read on in Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you shall die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her and he ate. You see, the serpent is actually the devil. You know how he was there and he started to tempt. He started to say, ah, make, you know, a twist. Do you really think God is, is uh, doing this for your best? No, he's doing it for holding something bad. He started to tempt Adam and Eve there. Can you imagine this, that all of a sudden, a certain day, Eve and later Adam started to eat of that tree and then something happened. The Bible calls this the fall of man, where we did fell from all the, the glory and great fellowship and relationship that we were created to give and live with God. And all of a sudden, mankind started to walk his own way. The death that God shared about that would happen was simply that the broken relationship between man and God came in. And actually, this is the very reason where we see so much evil also in the world today. Sometimes people say, oh, if God is so good, why is this going on? Why is there jealousy and war? Why is people being explored? Why is, is, is there torment and evil things going on? This is why. Because we as human beings chose that pattern, chose that way. We choose to neglect God and the fellowship with Him, and instead of 
making our own world and this is the result this is called the fall of man all of a sudden evil started to take place evil is the lack of the presence of god like coldness is the lack of heat darkness is the lack of light and all of a sudden this was what happened man chose to walk away from god who is the light and then all of a sudden darkness started to come in man chose to walk away from the fellowship of god and all of a sudden instead of a warmth fellowship coldness started to come in the bible says we have all ended up in that situation we were created in living this pure and clean clean life and instead of our life became like this piece of cloth that was made to be pure and clean and white and all of a sudden so many th- stains start to come on it stains of jealousy lie stains of being selfish stains of hurting others yeah i'm sure we all realize that we all have certain things that is not really as they should have been that we might look really good on the outside but on the inside it's maybe not as great as we should have been we all know that there's thoughts that's not clean and things that actually is not pure like god is it's not holy like he is don't worry god has not abandoned us as we read through the bible the bible tells us these certain things again and again how number one god he still loves us no matter how dirty your life might be no matter how sinful you might be and as i've been walking through life you know met people from all walks of life from kings and president candidates people who's really super rich to the homeless and the poor and all the walks of life in between of there there's one thing i've noticed and that is that no matter what we all have our weaknesses we all have our sins we all have our struggles to struggle with maybe it's not obviously from the outside but then as you start to talk with people and they start to share about their life again and again we realize that we come short that we are not perfect as we should be i have traveled all over the world many many times in all religions in all um continents of life i've seen how people is trying their very best to make up for those mistakes that deep down in their hearts they know that are there what the bible calls sins by bringing many sacrifices of different kinds doing religious rituals of different kinds coming with offerings or things to 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 the spirits there being worshiped and in the hope for being qualified for a better life in the hope of being qualified for eternity for eternal life why do we know that why is it so deep in mankind to try to fill out something there that we know needs to cleanse us and we have this longing for eternal life well because we are all created to live in fellowship with god that's why we have this inside of us many places people try to fill up that gap with materialism trying to make a career trying to come up with excuses and explanations that oh it doesn't really matter just live your life as pleasant as you can but it just demands more and more in other nations it's maybe a hunger of seeking god and in many different ways trying to approach god trying to make their way back to god but the bible says that we cannot make our way back to god we are forever lost without him that we need a savior and thanks god the bible says that god has never abandoned us god never abandoned adam and eve god never abandoned mankind 
but he came up with a rescue plan, knowing that we could not make our way back to God. So therefore, God made his way back to us. There's a wonderful scripture in John chapter 3, verse 16. Actually, the Bible calls this scripture the little Bible. In other terms, the entire message of the Bible is included in this one scripture. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus was sent by God. Actually, the Bible says that this was God coming to us. He came for one purpose, to save us, save us from our sins, to qualify us, to make being worthy to get to heaven. That's why the Bible describes that Jesus came to give himself as a sacrifice on the cross. When Jesus was being crucified, it was not just a matter of an, an, a righteous man that uh, by unrighteous people was being crucified. This was Jesus coming and giving himself for us. This was God's great rescue plan. His rescue line down to you and to me. On that cross, Jesus was pouring out his blood which is that blood that can cleanse us and make up for all the mistakes, all the sins that you and I, we have ever done. The blood of Jesus. Now, let me ask you this. If your teeth is dirty and smell real bad, what do you do then to cleanse it? Well, you brush your teeth with toothbrush and toothpaste. What if your hands is dirty? Well, you take some soap and then you wash it with your hands. Water and that soap is going to cleanse all bacteria away from your hands. What if your clothing is dirty? What then? Well, then you go and you get some detergent. You wash it in that and that cloth becomes clean and fine again. But how does a person cleanse its inner man from all the sins that Bible describes that we have? How is it possible to get all our inner being washed? Not by eating toothbrush or toothpaste, not by eating soap. Mm, even if we try to make up, you know, we made this mistake and then we try to make up with other good things, giving money to the poor, or trying to stop doing this or that, will never cleanse us. It's like if a thief has stolen something and then he regret and then he kind of tried to give money to, to poor of the money he maybe even stole. That is not making him not a thief anymore. He's still a thief. We are still sinners. The Bible says there's one thing that can cleanse us in our inner man, that can wash all our sins away, and that is the blood of Jesus. Let me show you in this simple, simple illustration here. Remember, we were all, this is like this dirty cloth. This is how we all look like inside. This is what the Bible calls sin. Well, if we put that sin into the blood of Jesus, if we come to him, all surrounded by this detergent for it to clean it, it's being washed and washed. And then when it comes out, it comes out like what it was supposed to be, clean and pure and white, like this clothing. This is why Jesus came here on earth. He came that we should be cleansed by him. 
there's hope for every one of us. We can all be made qualified to go to heaven. Jesus can qualify us. He can cover us with his blood. He can wash us clean with his blood. You see, we will never in ourselves be made perfect, but he can make us perfect in the eyes of God. It's like when this cloth came into that washing soap, it was hitting in that detergent. And when he came out on the other side, it was clean. This is what the blood of Jesus can do when you apply it to you. Now, how can we apply the blood of Jesus today, you ask? It's all by faith. The Bible says that if we believe Jesus is the Son of God, if we confess him with our mouth, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he can save you, and you believe it in your heart, you confess it, you pray it out with your mouth, then the blood of Jesus will come right away and wash all your sins away and he will qualify you to become uh, his child and come in to spend eternity in heaven. Let me quickly repeat for you four things that will happen in your life when you ask Jesus Christ to come and be your savior. Number one, your sins will be washed away. Only the blood of Jesus can wash a man or a woman's sins away. But that blood is also able to do it. That blood is the cure for you to have your sins washed away. Number two, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Bible says in John 1.12 that all those who received him became a child of God. You see, the blood of Jesus not only cleanses you, it also transforms you to become a child of God, an heir of eternal life. This is a matter of getting a new start, a new beginning in your life. This is so amazing. The third thing that God wants to do through Jesus is that he will bring his life into your life. His life, Jesus said that the thief, the devil, just came to steal, kill, and destroy, but that he, Jesus, came to give you life in abundance. Do you realize that that emptiness you have inside of you, that that, that emptiness you feel that you're not really satisfied, that's because you're short of Jesus. All the things you again and again to try to fill in there, more women, more sex, more materialism, more pleasures, more all this and that. But then shortly after, that also run empty. It's because you need the life of God to come into your heart. The fourth and last thing is that when we receive Jesus in our hearts, our life, our name is recorded in the book of life. This means that Jesus has qualified you to get eternal life in heaven. This means that when the day come and your life is ending here, then you will have eternal life in heaven. This is what Jesus did for you. Now, there's one little thing you must do to receive Jesus. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and if you confess with your mouth, do you realize Jesus is just one prayer away from you? All it takes is a humble heart that knows that we need Jesus as our Savior. I'm going to close this program by praying a prayer together with you. And if you want to join this prayer because you say, I need Jesus. And you say, I need to surrender my life and heart to him. Why don't you then join this prayer with me? Pray it along with me. You're not praying to me. This is me helping you, but you are then praying to Jesus. He's near, right there where you are at. If you'll pray to him, he will hear your heart praying. Close your eyes, put your hand upon your heart right now, 
and then pray this prayer with me. If this is truly the desire you have, that you want Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, I believe you're the Son of God. Here I am. Save me. Forgive my sins. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Cleanse my heart. I need you. I need your eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. When you prayed this prayer from your heart, Jesus did hear that prayer with his heart. Now it's just important that every day from now on, that you live your life close to Jesus. Let me quickly give you three advices that will help you in doing so. Number one, pray to Jesus every day. You can pray to Jesus at any time, at any position, at any place. It's like talking with your best friend. Just start out saying, Jesus Christ, I come to you. Don't pray to any other name, pray to Jesus. Then you can share with him all the things that is burdening you, but also your joy and thanksgiving to him. Remember, it's like he's your best friend. Number two, when, you read, when we read in the Bible, we learn more about Jesus. Maybe you don't have a Bible. Maybe you know somebody who has a Bible. Why don't you ask that person if you can read in the Bible together? Or maybe you have a smartphone. Do you realize that you can download the entire Bible as an app for free in your language? And then you have the Bible. And number three, if you have any opportunity to have fellowship with other followers of Jesus Christ, that will be a great help for you to live a life close to Jesus. As we finish here, there will be a contact information with the email and cell phone number. You can call. That's our call center. There's people there waiting for you to call that is able to hear your prayer request. Or if you have prayed along on this prayer, why don't you contact that call center and say, I prayed this prayer. What now? And then they will help you, guide you, give you great advices, and pray with you. Thank you for watching this new life. May God bless you.